What's going on, friends? Sam Brett is back once again, and FL Sun have just dropped two new Delta printers, the S1 and the T1 that's just shown behind me here. These Delta printers seem to be getting bigger, faster, and really, really exciting. However, there are some compromises to be had with this one. Uh, so, well, let's get straight on into it. You are watching a master at work. Today's video is sponsored by our friends at PCBWay. So if you are looking for top quality PCB manufacturing, look no further than PCBWay.com. With state-of-the-art facilities and a commitment to excellence, PCBWay delivers premium printed circuit boards tailored to your needs. From prototype to production runs, they guarantee precision, reliability, and a fast turnaround time. Trust PCBWay for all your PCB needs and visit PCBWay.com today to experience the difference. FL Sun has been a company that I've really appreciated over the years, and they were one of the first to invest in my channel by sending me the original Q5 Delta printer some years ago. And well, how times have changed. But note that I still have every Delta printer that FL Sun have sent me, including the Q5, the SR, the V400 and now the T1. So while I'm setting this up, let's have a look at some of the specs on the T1. And let's start with speed. Well, we're running at 1000 millimeters per second with an acceleration of an incredible 30,000 millimeters squared. On this model, the flow rate apparently runs at 90 millimeters squared, which gives you some major advantages over most bed slingers. As with pretty much all new printers, we are running Clipper which will give you that open source vibe, which really has been the case with FL Sun in recent years. However, I'm unable to SSH into the back end at this point in time, which means there are gonna be some restrictions over things that I can change inside of the print files. And my best guess is that they've done this so people aren't messing around too much with the firmware prior to the overall release. Great. The build volume on this one is 260 by 330. Of course, it is a round build volume for the Delta printer. And it's worth mentioning that the alternative S1 does have a larger bed. And for comparison, it's 320 by 430, making that their largest to date. And if we look at this chart, they have been progressively getting faster and certainly larger from 2016 all the way up to 2024. The evolution of Deltas from FL Sun has been an interesting journey and to give a balanced view, well, it's not always been easy working with them as a manufacturer. At times it's felt like elements have been cheapened on things like the type of boards used or the type of cloned extruders or even hot ends, which on previous models have added to an annoyance in its usability. And having said that, of course, it's very frustrating that when a new Delta printer comes out, and let's be fair, there aren't a huge amount of companies that are really developing these now. It would be really exciting if we could just get it out and it work first time. However, these little glitches seem to be apparent in pretty much all FL Sun's releases, unfortunately. So is the T1 any different? It's difficult to say. And uh, I've got to say, I really want this to be great. And I'm working with FL Sun to try and get this over the line so let me just show you a couple of things first and foremost the test prints that i did um you got a 10 minute benchy on there which i didn't print but there's other files as well there's the cat which actually does look fabulous then we've got this kind of bowl which again looks great then we've got this um, lighthouse and again you know pretty happy with the quality overall no major issues then we had this file, which I thought was going to be amazing. And when I actually got it off the printer, I thought that looks splendid up until the point where I kind of saw there was a line around here and we'd slightly uh, come adrift on the print, but it kind of half recovered and um, carried on printing. So that was great. So these are the pre-sliced files. I then downloaded the FL Sun uh, Prusa <laughs> slicing software and then things took a bit of a weird turn uh here's an example so i downloaded the duke docs uh, dodge challenger again i've got a bit of a penchant for uh, those types of cars at the moment so i uh, downloaded this file brilliant file set by the way go and check it out 100 you need to do that and you need to print one of these loaded it into the slicer hit the button and walked away however we started getting some catastrophic failures at this point and it was kind of weird on how things kind of went adrift here so i figured that i probably had maybe a nozzle block uh and and that might have been caused by the fact that the uh, filament is basically mounted above the extruder 
it's a cardboard spool and i figured maybe we've got some kind of detritus that's kind of dropped off of that and gone inside the uh the, the filament path and maybe kind of blocked the nozzle so changed the nozzle out made sure that the entire kind of vessel was clean um and it was and everything was fine there was a weird kind of dusting of metal um on on top of the extruder and i ended up having to take the whole extruder out in the end to try and make sure that this was totally unblocked remounted everything back up again and yet yeah, we still got the same problem but here's something that's kind of bizarre and eluding me at the moment which kind of makes me think that this is pointing towards being a possible firmware issue so hopefully it'll be here or here but just to explain when you load the filament that comes out absolutely fine you can even grip the filament at the top and you can feel that the extruder is not binding it's not pulling back it's not giving you any kind of issues or blockage problems at that point but as soon as you print a file be it one of the original test files which we know that work and are absolutely fine because they've obviously printed so far you get under extrusion but also you get a kind of jittering on the extruder motor as well and i can't for the life of me understand why that is now again we've had working models they've been pretty good so far but as soon as we've started now and i think we might have stumbled across maybe a, a problem or something has failed or broken but at the same time you know when you're loading that extruder with that new filament you shouldn't really have any issues with with the fundamentals of the extruder working at that point and of course because the ssh and the access to modifying anything really there is closed off at this point there's not a lot i can do also i thought and as i was setting up that last shot basically to show how the filament goes in i actually knocked one of the cables that feeds the extruder and basically the motor kind of made this kind of weird noise now it's the first time i've heard that when it's not actually physically printing so i kind of played around with that a little bit and it looks like there's a possible kind of uh, wire that's been pinched and it's making the kind of noise that you'd get if you wire up an extruder motor or a stepper motor incorrectly either inverting it or um or disconnecting one of the cables and it kind of makes a kind of growling weird noise um so it was kind of making that i can only assume that perhaps the cable is faulty uh, i'm going to reseat it take it out see if it needs cleaning see if there's any kind of pinch points or any breaks on that and fingers crossed we might be back in business so i manipulated the cable i selected the cat and pressed print and guess what we have a cat the cat printed it's got a, one or two kind of small imperfections there as i was still kind of manipulating the cable around just to try and make it fail to find out exactly where the point was but the way that the extruder works is you plug the cable in and then you fasten two screws down to it that all seems okay but there's another part on it that also has some screws in it and i think they might have been a little bit too tight and i think they may might have just pinched the cable so we're at a manufacturing kind of default with this um so i will of course reach out to fl sun and suggest what the problem was uh, and hopefully fingers crossed they will send me another cable but it enables us to move on to the next point so let's do it next the mounting of a filament ball inside of the chamber using a hex wrench uh, to support it now in theory this is a reasonably good idea but if you are going to be using cardboard spools uh, or even plastic spools invariably you are going to generate swarf and dust which will be blown around all inside your printer covering your linear rails your prints and glass and plastics so don't think it's the best idea and i think longer term i will probably be mounting the uh, filament externally of that or i'll create some kind of um cover for the hex wrench in order for it to flow nicely now this is the big one now if you are hard of hearing or potentially deaf then this isn't going to be a major issue for you or if you live in a house that perhaps has a printer room that's really far away from people who aren't going to hear basically a vacuum cleaner you'll probably be okay but for those of you that aren't well listen to this what is safe to say is that the rapid airflow is going to be noisy and by taking out the inlet filter well it does knock the noise down just a little bit but it's still not enough in my opinion to be working in the same room as this printer unfortunately now with a db rating of up and around 95 up close and 80 just a few meters away it's close to kind of hearing protection issues in my opinion that being said let's see if we can fix it and maybe come back to this this kind of noise issue must have been very apparent for FL Sun because they did send this file along as well on the SD card. And this is basically an inhibitor. So the idea is that the airflow will come in here. It will then go around a few little chambers and then basically come through the other side. You basically pop that on top. Um, kind of defeats the whole object as far as I'm aware. And I imagine that in some way, shape or form, it will also inhibit it. But let's try it now. Let's test it out. 
So in this test, adding the airflow filter removed around about 12 decibels of overall noise. My ambient room reading is in fact 45, so peaking at around 90 just, well, isn't great. Additionally, when using my vacuum cleaner, the noise was actually less from the vacuum cleaner than it was from the printer. One clear change that I did notice from adding and removing the filter was the changeable temperature on my hand. With it off, it was cooler, and of course with it on, it was warmer. However, I didn't see any visible differences in the prints that I tested inside of that range. Well, why is that? What's this really all about? As you can see inside of the machine, there's a piece of pipe. Now, this pipe is there to carry cool air from the top of the printer and blow cooler air onto the part as a part cooling fan solution. This is what's called CPAP, or CPAP which is a CPAP turbo fan. You have to be a little bit careful on how you say it and read that, of course. But in principle, the spec is that it operates at the speed of 30,000 RPM per minute. The idea of this is to be able to deliver a large amount of cool air and weight saving. However, the extruder does still have two hot end fans attached, which are used to keep the cold part of the hot end cold, or, well, certainly cool. And as I said before, what was noticeable, even with the printed noise reduction part, is that the airflow actually felt warmer with it on. Plus the weight of the air pipe sitting on that extruder, I have to assume that the weight saving is probably marginal. But of course the airflow would certainly be extreme. The tech spec reads at 30,000 RPM per minute with a large wind force of 7.7 .7 milliseconds. I don't really know what that means, but it's capable of keeping the lowest temperature at apparently 33.8 Celsius. What this means in practice is a little bit difficult to understand, but what is clear is that the machine can't live in the room that I'm recording in without causing significant problems. This, of course, would be just me being in the room. My personal preference, of course, is to be printing, but the process to be as quiet as possible. The stepper motors installed on the T1 actually run at 3 amps, which tends to be double the amount of a standard printer. The spec again reads that the maximum rotation speed is 2000 RPM, with a peak torque of 0.5 Newton meters. These are up on what would usually be called stock at the amount of 1800 rpm and a torque of 0.15 newton meters technically speaking while the printer does have all the usual refinements of auto bed leveling color touch screen and a camera the only thing that's really keeping me engaged right now is the fact that it's a delta printer and nobody else is really making these and that's despite that the firmware isn't particularly good the camera isn't great the enclosure is subpar there is obviously problems with the extruder cables Oh yes, and the hot end dropping after calibration. That's a that's a good one. Despite some of the printer's shortcomings, I believe that the T1 does have some potential to be great, especially at the launch price of which I have on good authority it'd be $499. Then at post launch it will then shoot up to $599. And I'd say for $500 it's still a pretty good deal. The next firmware update will hopefully bring in some of the community experience around the shortcomings with clipper installs. The community loves, of course, open source firmware. And remember, no manufacturer owns clipper and printers using this firmware should be publishing source codes to allow you to have full access. I have no reason to think that FL Sun would not do this, but it's a consideration before parting with your hard earned money. So to summarize then, I do believe that the T1 eventually will be a good printer. I think in this case, maybe they've just kind of launched it a tiny bit early, but we have had some good prints out of this. I reprinted this guy as well. Um, there's no kind of layer shift or anything there. And we also printed uh, David here as well. Uh, which came out really cool. This is uh, available, a uh, file that's available on printables. I'll link it in the description below. Um, I think for $500, if you're looking for a Delta printer, this could be certainly a contender. However, if you look back to my V400 experience, um, I felt like the unboxing of that printer and the first prints kind of went without any hitches. There seemingly seems to be murmurs inside of the community and uh, people that are testing and reviewing printers like the uh, the S1, the um, the bigger brother to this. There seems to be some talk around problems and it does seem to be kind of firmware related in those kind of instances. Now, I did see FL Sun at Rapid TCT when I was uh, out in LA and seemingly the printers were working and looking fine um, again printing test files etc etc you know those machines are probably tried and tested but i kind of feel like they went a little bit early with this and now they're seemingly kind of backtracking so firmware is going to be the next thing i'll probably do a short on that if you want to see more uh, of these models and see what else i'm printing make sure you check out my instagram the links of course will be in the description below let me know what you think about this printer let me know if it's something that you're going to buy or if it's something you're going to highly avoid um thanks to fl sun thanks to pcb way 
And of course, thanks to Polymaker. Guys, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. You are watching a master work.